in this demo, we are going to see uh, how uh, uh, we are going to use uh, NIM uh, with MLRAN and how MLRAN allows us to uh, use NIMs with a production first mindset and uh, MLOps best practices. We are going to use the NIM uh, to build a multi agent uh, banking chatbot. So let's begin. Uh, we are going to use uh, MLRAN and uh, LangChain. Uh, as our framework of choice. Uh, so we have some of the prerequisites. We're going to create an MLRAN project. And now, how to deploy a NIM with MLRAN? So deploying a NIM with MLRAN is very easy. MLRAN has an application runtime, which can take any image and simply uh, serve it as a serv serverless function. And NIM uh, is no uh, strange to that. So. We are going to create a NIM application. Uh, we are going to give it a, a name. We're going to choose the model. In this scenario, we're going to use Llama 3 8 billion instruct, and we're going to provide it the API key. This API key is going to be uh, set as a secret and so on, everything automatically. I click deploy, and now I get a NIM that is uh, fully uh, auto-scalable and all the good stuff. Uh, we can hit invoke and we can see I asked it, what is the capital of Great Britain? And after a long answer, I got London, which is great. So how to use a name? We are going to use the name uh, to build an intent uh, classification step uh, in our banking uh, chatbot. So we want uh, our banking chatbot to have, it will have three agents. So we have agents that is in charge of loans, another one on investments, and another for uh, other casual talk. Uh, so uh, we want to build an intent classification to actually send the message to the right agent. So uh, I built here uh, some classic prompts. Uh, it's, it probably is not the best, but it's good for the uh, demonstration here. Uh, we are going to use uh, the NVIDIA LLM from uh, LangChain. This is uh, how NIM is integrated into LangChain. Uh, we are going to give it our NIM application URL, uh, the model to use, and uh, we are going to build uh, our prompt template from the prompt. And to test it, we are going to hit invoke and I asked it, I needed 250,000 uh, US dollar to open a restaurant. What option do I have? And it classified it as a loan, which is great. So now how do I operationalize a NIM using MLRAN? So MLRAN uh, provide us great way uh, and very easily to uh, uh, enable MLOps to the NIM that we just served. First of all, we are going to have an LLM gateway. What is an LLM gateway? MLRAN uh, have a, a built-in gateway that we can use. And through this gateway, we can uh, use a self-hosted model or even any model provider like OpenAI for here on topic. In this scenario, we are going to, to use NIM and OpenAI for the monitoring, which are going to uh, talk soon. Uh, why should I use the LLM gateway? Well, first of all, it enables us 100% modularity. I don't need to go to the code of my chain and, uh, and, and edit it because I can just configure it from outside and I can then choose and play with every model uh, on demand. For example, if I, if I have to reduce cost, for example, if I want to use a stronger model on some, uh, on some request, I can just tweak it and uh, use uh, on the same uh, gateway another model. And another thing is that usually for monitoring, which is very important aspect of uh, MLOps, uh, LLM monitoring is quite different because model monitoring uh, in classic ML and deep learning solutions, you would monitor the model because every model will have uh, basically one use case, maybe two. LLM, because of the prompt, enable us to uh, use a single model with multiple use cases. So it's very important to not only monitor the model, but monitor each use case. So what it enables us to do it is we are going to use the same gateway with different labels, 
And then we can actually, even if we choose a different model for the same use case, I can monitor per use case, I can monitor per model, and I can monitor in general the entire application. So how to do it? Very simple. We are going to set a function. It is the uh, model server. And we are going to add uh, our model there. And we simply, uh, so here I'm testing it. I'm turning it to a mock server. I'm testing it here on the notebook. Uh, uh, I, I sent it hello. I see hello. It's nice to meet you. Uh, and now we're going to enable the monitoring. So to monitor, we are going to use uh, uh, our built-in model as a judge, monitor application. You can write your own applications as well. Uh, but for this demo, we're going to use uh, the LLM as a judge. If you want to learn more about LLM as a judge, we have another uh, demo as available in GitHub. Uh, so I'm not going to talk so much, but uh, this is our, going to be our prompt for the judge. It's basically telling it, the judge what is goal, uh, how to score uh, the incoming elements, uh, and uh, some few shot uh, classification for uh, the prompt. We are going to set in the project our mo model uh, monitoring function, which is our application. So we can see LLM is a judge application. Then we're going to deploy the function, and then we're going to deploy our gateway. Everything is deployed. And now I want to use my gateway instead of the NVIDIA uh, in LangChain. Again, it's very simple. All we have to do is change the NVIDIA LLM class into MLRAN class and it receives our MLRAN function. So this is the only change. It receives the model name and the label to actually monitor specific use case. I will reconstruct the chain with our new LLM, and I'm going to test it in a, on a data set that we have, and I see uh, we scored about 87%. So our prompt is not great, but it's not terrible. Now I want my judge to actually score. Uh, I want to see how the judge that we monitor, how he scored the model. So happily, our prompt for the judge is very strong, and the judge itself is based on OpenAI. So we can see that the judge actually scored it almost identically to the ground truth. So the judge scored it about 86%, and the ground truth is 87%. So I know my judge is monitoring my model very good. Uh, so after that, uh, Yaron talked about the GenAI factory. So we want to take our intent classifier into an actual application. And again, it is very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to wrap it in a class, which is called the chain runner. We're going to copy the entire uh, code to the run of method of this class. And whatever component we want to be automatically tracked and configurable, we are going to put in the init. So uh, this intent classifier is going to be a reusable component. I don't want it uh, to be just for banking. So it receives the classifier classes, and it will class based on the, uh, the configurable classes that it receives. Again, uh, the prompt template is also trackable and can configurable, and the LLM as well. So uh, this is going to be part of our uh, workflow. The workflow uh, is, uh, this is the intent classification connected to the agents. And this is how the workflow looks like. So we have the session loader. We have a refined query to uh, make it shorter with the history of the uh, chat. Then we have our intent classifier. Uh, we have a choice that is connected to all the agents. And we have a history saver to actually keep, uh, keep track of the entire conversation. We add the workflow to the server, and then we can just uh, deploy it. So I prepare in advance uh, the actual uh, conversation I have with the bot. So we can see here, uh, I'm going to ask him, what can you do for me? And this is the general agent. Uh, it will answer about all the agents that are connected to it and uh, what it can do. So general banking, loans, and investments. Now I'm going to uh, ask him about, 
I think I want to, yeah, I want to buy a house. Uh, what type of investment uh, do you have? Uh, so now the uh, loan, uh, oh, wait a second. Oh, so now the investment is going to take charge and not the loan. And yes, this is because I asked it, I'm planning to buy a house. What can you say about the terms of the investment? So it could go to a loan, but it classified it correctly. And we can see it actually uh, uh, told me what is very important in purchasing a house as an investment, location, market research, and so on. Then I, I asked him, what kind of loan can I take to buy a house? Uh, he will tell me the most common loan is a mortgage. Excellent. So you can see it is a mortgage loan. And I'm going to go back to the investment agent. I'm going to ask him uh, what type of other investment uh, does he recommend? And you can see he has stocks, bonds, and more stuff. So that's basically it. Uh, 